The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 46, Nasdaq's off 6, S&P's off 3.5, Gold's up 220, trading at 1482 an ounce. You got silver up five cents, sixteen dollars and ninety-seven cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up forty-three cents, fifty-eight dollars eighty-seven cents a barrel. Now this is a we're a spot here, Tom. That it can't seem to break it. Yeah, you know, it had a monster day yesterday in oil. Sure did. And it's laying there, man. It's just laying there. And you know the meeting. Does they get they got a meeting out there? The Saudis, actually for the year, back down on the amount of. Uh, oil that they produce. OPEC, right? Yeah. Bringing it out? Uh, well, Is that the, Saudis as well? The, the Saudi in general. Okay. The, the numbers came out. It would make uh, sense, right? Less supply, guess, boost up that Aramco IPO. That's right. But guess what? We get the United States pumping oil, man. We sure do. That's gonna, that we is sure the do. wild card. Notes and bonds. You get the 10-year note down, 8 ticks trading 129.05. The 30-year off 19 at 158.04 in King Dollar. King Dollar down 195 ticks trading 97,453. That's making. That's trying to make it to its uh, 97,107 lower band there, folks. The euro's at 110. Uh, the pound has caught a bid. That's at 131. That broke out yesterday, and the yen is at 108.81. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think and swim as we do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day, day here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand the options market, you want to understand strategies, you want to understand futures, all of the above. Defined risk, really important in a market like right now, no doubt. Kevin has been shopping all week at Restoration Hardware. I guess so, man. <laughs> he took those shots. There's a shot position, oh boy, folks, of 39% um, in Restoration is Hardware. Is that a big number? And guess what? It is what? when Rest it's up, yeah. Restoration Hardware right now is trading up about $14. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, I want to talk about something that you guys were talking about just a minute ago. And that is crude oil. Yes. Because, you know, there's an OPEC meeting going on right now. And what you guys touched on is very significant. And what it is, the number 12.9 million barrels a day. And that is what the U.S. oil crude oil production is up to. 12.9 million barrels a day. And since the beginning of the year, monster. guys, yeah. that is up over a million barrels a day in terms of U.S. production. And so... Every single month and every single quarter that the U.S. produces more and more crude oil, any news coming out of OPEC and any news coming out of a meeting like this in Vienna gets less and less significant I know. in terms of its ability to move crude oil. You know, it's a, isn't it amazing, Kevin, that you think we're in this spot? I mean, I remember, you know, when I first started the Gold Report, now that's a long time ago, it's 2001, but that's when all those books are out about peak oil. Okay. <laughs> you know, and even when I saw it, I said, you know, I've been through this before because the oil embargo, the Arab oil embargo, that was a disaster. But that was supposed to be the end of the world also. And then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, the bottom line is that we really have production, you know, in, in a huge way now. Right. Exactly. And the U.S. has taken, really, if you think about it, all the volatility out of the crude oil trade. Because OPEC can, and you know what they're going to say, they've got a Saudi Aramco uh, oh, yeah. IPO coming up shortly. They're going to do whatever they can to get crude oil futures as high as they can, but they don't have the fundamentals on their side. Right. You know, they, they, they can temporarily cut. There's very little... It's very difficult to, to measure if they're compliant when they talk about cuts. And frankly, one of the biggest you know, influences in OPEC is not even an OPEC member, and that's Russia. Yes. Cause, you know, so there's so many microeconomic issues affecting crude oil. But one, one thing, if you think about it, some Americans have stocks, some Americans have investments, but the one thing in the financial markets that affects every, almost every single American is crude oil prices and gasoline prices. Oh, yeah. 
And right now we're going into the Christmas holiday season with more and more people with more and more money in their pocket because because gasoline prices are lower. That's like a, a raise to every American. No, it is. And it's that's the one consistency, I'd say, in all our lives. I mean, if you have a car and you have to go to work. I was just saying, I don't know how you avoid it, right? Whether you live in a house with right. air conditioning, heat, right. driving. I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. And particularly now, you know, we're in the winter. I mean, it's cold out, you know, in Chicago. It's cold in Boston. Yep. I mean, that's when some heavy-duty heating bills come into effect, man. I mean, you know, yeah, so, I mean, uh, heating oil is more eastern than uh, the Chicago area. The Midwest doesn't have a lot of heating oil okay. anymore. Okay. But, but still, gasoline prices, I mean, yeah. that affects every single person, especially in the Midwest, where there's still a lot of drivers. And we can have this debate about what the 20 year is 20 year effect of electric cars and all that is going to be and the, and millennials and what they're doing but right now gasoline prices lower gas prices at the pump means more money in american consumers pockets who already have a better job and are making more money and already have better uh more, you know, more money in their, you know, more disposable income in their pockets. So There's I no, think this is just going to be a pretty good holiday season no, for, no. for these retailers right, right. in America in general. No, there's no doubt. And, you know, we were doing the, uh, the oil numbers yesterday, Kevin, right? Yeah. And, you know, it was a drawdown, folks. A, a big, big draw. A yeah. big drawdown on, on crude. But guess what? There was a build of 3.9 million barrels in gasoline. So yeah. I said to Tommy, yeah. says, okay, right. well, they made... And, and then you see that a lot. Crude will go down, but gas goes up. And, well, where does... What affects the American consumer? It's not necessarily crude oil prices. No. It's gas prices, right. right? None of us buy barrels of oil. That's right. Exactly. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. Not yet, anyway, Tom. No. Exactly. What I was going to say is just the driving deal. And we're familiar with Boston. They have, they have some great infrastructure for, you know, the tea around there and so yes. forth. New York as well. But we're in Florida, Kevin, and unfortunately, we don't have that. We're, we have drivers everywhere still down here. Like you're talking about the Midwest as well. Right. Um, it's a little unfortunate, but in terms of crude, man, everybody's driving. We don't have that rail, that train New system. New urban cities like Tampa is an up-and-coming new city, still young in terms of, you know, compared to places like Chicago oh, and other big cities. You know, they don't have the infrastructure. No. You're right, Tommy. If you got to get commute to work, you are commuting in a we car. Should, hopefully we'd spend some, man, because we got some traffic around the roads, man. Oh, we, we, we can't do. even build roads fast enough. Great for the economy. You know, people coming down here, jobs, businesses. But, man, oh, man, trying to keep up on the traffic basis is intense around here right now. The, the, you have a wealth of riches in Florida and, 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 and a great tax base and and you've got a lot of things going on in florida that make people want to move there we love those tourism no, dollars and no taxes doubt. we do what are we going to be looking at today kevin uh today's a fun day because we still have some good names even though it's very late in the early season ulta we you know we oh, love to dive into ulta so it's such a fun stock to do yeah. um like folio is going to cover it yeah we're going to cover um you know everything having to do we got a couple trades that we're going to manage so, we, we, you know, we got some great trades coming up. It's going to be a good one. Let's yeah. see what what is the expected move, because we just pulled up the chart, Kevin, and, and was it their last earnings? I think it was that they dropped basically. Pretty big miss, yeah. yeah. And let's see what they're one day. You got to love it. We go over to the $21 analyze. $21 expected move, Tommy. What is it, Kevin? $21. $21. $21. There it is, $21. folks, right there on the Thinkorswim platform. All right. Folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. Look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. Have a great weekend, and we, we look forward to the show in 45 minutes. Always great talking with you, Brian. Have a great weekend. You guys. too, Thank Kevin. You. Thanks, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. 322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now off 48. You get the NASDAQ off 14. S&Ps are off 2.5. Uh, gold. Gold's up a buck 90. Uh, we get the dollar making its way down to that 97,107 uh, area. And uh, as you come over to our website, folks, at TFNN, you are going to see right in the featured content, Tom's Morning Market Report. So it's always nice, man, when you have some things happening this morning. Yeah. We talked about restoration hardware, right? We talked about, we haven't gotten into Dollar General yet this morning. Let's pull up that chart, man, because things change a lot from when I do this update at 9 a.m. Yeah. The headline was market looks to, markets look to open higher on a nice weekly jobless number. Haven't commented on this yet as well, but 203,000 for the weekly jobless claims. That number lowest since mid-April, man. Pretty interesting, especially ahead of the non-farm payroll number right. tomorrow. And we had a bad number yesterday. I was going to say, right? So you get a bad ADP number, only like 63,000 <laughs> jobs added. But you get a great <laughs> unemployment number for 203,000. And then we get the biggest number of all non-farm payrolls tomorrow. But to pull up where I think I had Dollar General in here, because we had United, we have Nike getting an upgrade from Goldman. So there's Dollar General this morning, right? We were at 157 even. You spiked all the way to 162. But man, oh man, you pull it up right now. And Dollar General came out with great earnings. But they've given it all up, man. They're up less than 1% now after being up to 162.28. And I had a few of the accolades they had in here. Great numbers, man, when you look at this, right? Net sales rising look almost 9% to $6.99 billion, above the estimate of 6.92. Net income, $365 million from three thirty four a year earlier. The expectation was a buck thirty eight, so they come in a buck forty two, buck forty eight. Same store sales, four point six percent. They were only looking for three point three four. What's it going to take not to sell it off? I, That's isn't it amazing? Yeah. Um, just across the board. So there's there's some more there's some more action in there for sure. Um, and just to jump back, I don't think they've had the conference call yet because I always love one. That's their earnings number. And you'll see on this chart when the conference call begins, maybe they've got that scheduled sometime today. I'm not sure. But check out the link. I'm putting these out most mornings. And uh, Red Hat as well, man. Look at that number on Red Hat. Earnings per share, 279. They were looking for 223. 
Big number. Not fun to be one of the 39% uh, that are short. That oh, that's right. No, that's... I was jumping around now. This is Red Hat. I, no, I think that's Restoration Hardware. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Restoration. Yeah. Yes, right. yes, yes. Thanks. Um, that's a big number. Now, yeah. And the shot position in this stock, folks, okay, this is just, you know, 39% shot position, and you're coming out with numbers like this. And, you know, I guess what's also happening here is that what I didn't realize, they're... They're not changing their MO, but what they're doing with these large... Have you ever been to one in I have. Tampa? They have one at an international mall that b practically looks like a hotel. It's so... And so is it a big food deal there, too? I'm not aware. I guess what they're doing is that they're... they're I mean, they sell $10,000 couches. Okay? Sure, so that's right. what they're known for. But now what's also going on, I was reading this thing, that they have all of that, but then in between all of that, in, the, in these big buildings, right, they got... A big restaurant going, do you know what I mean? So okay. they're, they're making it like a destination, too, okay. apparently, you know? The so. first time that I saw it at International Mall, I, I literally thought they had put a hotel in the mall yeah. because it had that type of a presence. And, and there's then, only like four of those in the country, you know? The ones like, yeah, the, 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 the big monster ones like okay. this, okay? Um, and, but really <laughs> they're doing something right. I mean, you know, they must they, be, they're getting man. accused of a million different things by the shot sellers, but the reality has says... That, those numbers, uh, that hey, does a big And now numbers. they got Warren Buffett as an investor as right. well. So right. uh, the, the stock, even from the open, man, we've shot, uh, shot up from about 210, now turning to 218.43, up 6.2%, as you said, um, like 40% stock. Yeah. And just so we finished it up with Kevin, but just to, you know, we talk about it occasionally, but the Analyze tab on the Thinkorswim platform. So here's Alta, and we talked about it briefly, the sell-off. We'll just put it on a four-hour. Uh, that makes it. We'll, we'll put it on daily. Uh, this, I believe, was their last earnings coming out in August 28th. You were up at $337, and you then finished the next day at $237, a hundred-dollar drop-off. Now, interesting enough, because you go over to the Analyze tab, you pull up Alta. The one-day market expected move, $21.77. That's what Kevin was talking about. So that's basically the, the volatility that's priced in in either direction. That's a big move when you're talking it's about $240 stock. Uh, that's about 9%. But the last time they had earnings, they moved $100 down. Yeah. Uh, so like the, if you're going to be the one selling volatility, you're going to need some money, right? You, oh, you, yeah. you wouldn't be selling it for peanuts, man. If you're giving somebody a defined risk trade as... That's what you're doing when you're selling volatility, right? right? You're selling somebody else the ability to lock it in in an option. So it'll be interesting to see Alta when they come out with their earnings after. So the month. Uh, we get natural gas, right? We sure do. Yeah, let's, let's jump take, over. Let's Perfect. It. We'll pull it up. Uh, it's cold across the, the country, but guess what? <laughs> we get plenty of natural gas. So we'll see where this little natural gas market wants to go. We sure will. And there's oil jumping around a lot today. We'll jump in here in the market. We'll jump into our commodities. We'll jump into natural gas. I'm going to refresh this real quick to make sure all of the spreads are available. And let's see where we're trading at. Natural gas. Talk about some volatility recently, yeah, right? We'll jump uh, into the 11 a.m. spreads first. We're looking at the January contract. We're trading at 241 right now. We got about five minutes until that number comes out okay. at 1030 a.m. Eastern time. So a little bit of volatility. 2 a.m. We're trading at 240. We make it all the way up to 244. The 11 a.m. spreads, we do have the possibility of trading. It looks like they go from 245 would be the pivot point, upward or downward. Now, if you just want a straight future play, you know, you can always, this, this, the 235 to 255 spread is pretty much right in the middle of where oh, you yeah. were. And you're not going to be paying premium. No, that. right. That's interesting. Yeah. And then, um, so the new ones are going to be pretty much an identical trade. And that's because these are set into every five or 10 pennies. We haven't had a ton of movement just yet. Let's just see if we get a 240 price point. So here's a 240 price point. Now, if I'm bullish, I love the one where you're just barely in the money because you're not paying a ton right. of premium. It's just like an option where you yeah. get in maybe 30, 40, 50 cents in the money. So you got your not bullish. Not a lot of time left, yeah. No, you got the 230, all right? So you got a 240 contract. The contract's trading at 241.8, and this market's ticking at about 242.9, but 243.1. So you're paying, you know, the difference between the premiums, the difference from 241.7 where the market is, to 243, so about 13 ticks. Not a bad trade, though, when you look at that risk reward, right? Your loss is capped at 240. That's 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 the reason why you're getting this type of a risk for this type of a reward. And that's $32 to 368. Yeah, and basically, 
you could almost call it unlimited profit potential because the odds that it goes above 280 by 230 is almost zero. And you're capped at 240. Not a bad trade if you happen to be bullish. On the flip side of that, you want to go out of the money. You're going to be paying a little bit more premium. As you can see, that on that trade, we were paying about 17 ticks, 16 ticks. You go out of the money, just as you would on an out-of-money option. You're now risking only 16, but you're selling it at 238.3. The market's at 241.3, almost. You're almost a full three pennies, which okay. would be 30 ticks, right? Yeah. But you're only putting up $16. So there's, yeah. there's your... Um, and but, that's still 230 also. And as we're talking, this is moving right back down to that 240 strike price. So we can just kind of calibrate what it would cost them if you want to do the straight volatility trade. You got your bearish trade on the left. You're selling it. You got your bullish trade on the right. You're buying it. And you're looking at about 45 bucks, four no. and a half pennies away until 2.30. So we'll find out when we get back. Stay right there, folks. Tell me that. Come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so, gas uh, stockpiles fell 19 BCF, huh? That's right. Looks like the median analyst estimate was for a decline of 23 billion cubic feet. The whisper number they had in there was for a decline of about 17, so right in the middle okay. of the two almost. And the moment of truth, we'll jump over and see how the market is reacting to that news. 
jumping over. We got the contract trading up a bit. So we get a little bit of a spike. The contract was trading just ticking back towards about just under 241 when we came into that break at 27 past. You got January natural gas now trading at 242.40, climbing a little bit higher. And to recap what we're looking at here, if you took both sides of the trade, pure volatility, you were looking at almost four and a half pennies of movement you needed in one way or the other right. to break even. So we're at about three pennies right now. Now, what you could always do if you expected, let's just say, you know, when you think about managing this trade, okay, I was looking for a surprise number. I'm really bearish, the contract overall, but sure. I made a volatility trade. Maybe you say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to take my money off the top side. Yeah. You take off 37 bucks. You almost cover your cost. Maybe you were in a 43, 45, yeah. whatever it is, right? And then you still have exposure this contract stays active until 2.30. Which is a long time. It is a long time. And you can even see that you can almost get right back out at break even right now. Because you had 37 on one side, you had 8 on the other side. That's even with the bid offer because yeah. it's such a tight bid offer spread. But if you just want to let this one run, if it comes back down even a few pennies, you take that one off. Maybe, maybe you lock in a profit. Um, because maybe you say to yourself, you know what, I don't see it running higher. But guess what? As we say that, it's inching higher, man. 243.4 and rising in the price of that January natural gas. Wow. Yeah. Let's go take a look at, uh, so, oh, one, sec. So one of the biotechs out here today, folks, are just getting toasted and roasted in a huge way. Sage Therapeutics, and I've had plenty of calls on this in the past. Yeah, it rung a bell when um, I saw the headlines this yeah. morning as well. So you're down $84, you're trading $65, and if you want to see a mess in the, of a stock anyway, it's like... You want to talk about defined risk, man. Oh, my God. Does Nadex have any Sage Therapeutics spreads? Because that might be a good place to trade them. So, so your high is uh, January of 2018, $195. And then it tested this again only this summer. Yep. And that was... $193.59 in July. And that was after making it all the way down to a low of 79 bucks in uh, December of last year. A little volatility, right? A little bit. And what are you doing? You're coming right back to where it broke out from. So, you know, $59.65 is the breakout. You're at 56 and it rejected it. Can we get into the news? Because yeah, um, let's see. Cause anytime it's, you're down it's a monster failure. 60% in a day, Yes. Um, key depression study fails to show benefit. So it's unfortunate anytime, you know, these, these biotechs fail because yep. it usually means they have a drug that's, that's gone to the wayside. Lost almost two-thirds of its value after an experimental treatment for major depressive disorder failed to reach its primary target in a key study. The late-stage trial, dubbed Mountain, showed patients receiving SAGE-217 didn't get more relief than those taking a placebo for two weeks. That's well, that's, intense. It doesn't get much more intense than that, right? When right. literally they show no result more than a placebo. The results cast doubt on the future of the drug, which had been a key part of investors' broadly bullish stance on SAGE. Oof. That's, that's tough. And it's just unfortunate, man. You know, depression... A big problem with a lot of people out there. It's uh, it's always a shame when oh, you know you have hopes out there for a yeah. drug and and um, I, I mean, look at the, you know you're talking. Oh yeah, they no, they no take revenue. in nothing and look at the earnings. I yeah. mean, just burning cash, man. Yeah, burning cash. So let's see, bio, B I Biogen. Biogen is supposed to be coming out today. Now this has been highly volatile also with their Alzheimer's drug. Um, yeah, look at this thing. So. That's when they... Let me bring it back. Yeah, because they have a drop, the too. They do. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, there you go. They so, came out and said that the Alzheimer's drugs show nothing. They're going to take it off the table, right? Yeah. And then, that was March of 2019. Yep. And then they came back out yeah. just in October and said, you know what? Further analysis of the data of the study showed that we are going to go to the FDA for approval. And so what are they looking for? Uh... Let's see, what does it say? Biogen stunned Alzheimer's researchers in March when it said the highly awaited Alzheimer's treatment. The Dukanubub? Was unlikely to work. Seven months later, the company reversed course and said the drug did work after all, at least in one of two large trials. That's not how it works, isn't it? Isn't it supposed on, to be two of two large trials? Yeah, it, no, I, but, so yeah. today, today uh, on Thursday, bio, uh, okay. Biogen scientists will present detailed results from those trials for the first time in a special hour-long session at a meeting of Alzheimer's specialist, specialist in San Diego. Okay. Much is riding on the presentation, both for the pharmaceutical industry and for the millions of Alzheimer's patients yeah. and their families grappling with the incurable disease. I mean, many times, you know, you, you got a company like Target coming out with earnings. It's just straight up dollars and cents. And that right. matters in people's lives, right? You got yeah. retirement, you get stuff like that. But it doesn't matter as much as if a drug ever comes out, like for Alzheimer's or something oh. like that. Um, it'll be interesting 
because they're presenting in front of what you could call almost their peers, right? Yes. Almost more important than like an FDA board. Those are the most important, oh, yeah. but you'll get a lot of reaction, I think, immediately about that presentation, how it goes, what the expectation might be in the future. You'll probably have a lot of analysts digging hardcore oh, yeah. into that. You might get upgrades and right. downgrades depending on how that goes. And it would seem that that would be the cleanest way to come out and say, okay, this is what I have, and I think it's yeah. great. So, Convince the specialists yeah, that are right. in that exactly. field, right, that are Alzheimer's All specialists. Yeah. yeah, right. Because, especially because, just like I said, at least in one of the two trials, I'm not a specialist, but drugs just can't work in one trial, not work in the That's other. Right. So, so what what is what is going to be the the reason that they say and it is going to work? Why didn't it work in all the trials? Why did it work in one out of the two? And can you can you convince the people who know the most about that field? Yeah, that's right. Because it, it's the right question to ask. Yes, exactly. Right? That's, exactly. It's the question to ask. There is yeah. that. Okay, what is the differential? What, what what do we do? And that's why a lot of the analysts, you know, in these companies that are brilliant, that you know, you get a biotech analyst, man. A lot of times they'll have a background stuff oh, because yeah. you got to because yeah. you got to know what's going on in terms of the field for whether it's you know a biology background whether it's some type of medical background oh, yeah. because you're always going to get a PR spin from the companies right you're right. always no matter what doesn't yeah. mean it's a lie you're just spinning things as best you can even if it's in a moral ethical way you're still kind of spinning things as positive as you can but they're not going to spin they got bad. a lot to spin in terms of what happened in March and tell us how that all changed uh, through October. No, no, yeah. Doubt. Yeah. no doubt. Let's take a look at some of the uh, high, other higher volume equities, and we'll see whether we get volume in this market. What we did, what we did do yesterday is we got a contraction of volume as we went to higher price. Uh, today, what you have out here, you got, uh, well, this is, yeah, we could, couldn't, Slack Technologies, they came out with numbers. That's okay. down 41 cents. I, yeah. I believe the numbers were pretty good, too. Sage is the big move. We're down 83. You got yeah. uh, At Home, that's down... Let's oh, see. that's a big one. That's down three dollars. Yeah. Yep. The got uh, you got apples uh, up a bit, a bit. Buck forty-five. They continue to yep. march on. Yeah. Okay. You get uh, Transocean. That's still struggling. Let's let's dig into Slack if we can. Yeah. All right, because you were talking about them. So um, downtrend since IPO broken this month. Potential support around twenty. Let's see if they get into. Okay, that's 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 not the link we got. We want, I guess. Um, just go back one. So it is work. That's where we we're work. I'm just going to pull up the news on that. Black Billings outlook to keep a lid on the stock. All right, we'll pull this up during the break and come back with it. Now it's his record third quarter fiscal year 2020 results. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 47. Nasdaq off 11. S&Ps are off 2. Market's kind of just laying here, right? It is. We had a little bit of a sell-off around the opening bell and not too much action this whole hour since we've kind of been on the air. Jumping back to Slack. those Slack numbers. So Slack down pretty marginally today, and we pulled it up. You were jumping through. So this is with a direct listing, right? When they didn't do an IPO. They just kind of put the shares out and said, trade wherever you may be. That's why when you go into the issue price, they actually don't have an IPO price that they went out to because they just release shares uh, into and the market. You'll see some bad beatings out here. I oh, mean, yeah. When we go from uh, highs to low, they came out. We'll pull up the intense. chart in a moment for sure. So, fisc I mean, just big numbers still, though, man. Fiscal year billing, $745 million to seven hundred sixty. The estimate had been seven fifty four, so pretty close. Fiscal year revenue, six twenty one to six twenty three. They were looking for six oh three to six ten. Fourth quarter adjusted loss per share, six to seven cents. The estimate had been 6.5, pretty close there as well. Um, pretty close numbers, you know, all things considered to the estimates they were looking for. Third quarter revenue, 168.7 million. The estimate was only 156. Uh, third quarter loss per share, 16 cents. And that, that was, they had a big loss, 98 cents quarter over quarter. So I, I guess, I mean, it really comes down to this, still not making money. No, uh, no. And yeah, to pull and that, up, well, there ahead. it is. So the net burn is 85, 85 to 80 million. Is that for the year, though, or just a quarter? Oh, that's for the year. Yeah. So 2020, the fiscal 2020, they expect to burn 85 million. Man, the analysts still a little timid, man. Nine bulls, nine buys, eight holds, three yeah. sells. That's that's a lot more timid than you see most of the stocks in this environment, especially. And to pull up the shares of Slack, and that's where you see. Uh, I think they went public uh, in June, and it's been cut in half since that time. 42 to 21, man. Big number. That is a big number. And they got, a lot of they got a lot of competition in terms of, you know, you got Microsoft Teams out there. The last, you want to hear a list of the companies I would never want to compete with right now? Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, Netflix, Disney, you know, and they'd all compete. Yeah. But, man, if you're competing with any one of those companies, you better be hitting the thing, you know, your business plan on all cylinders because they're competing with, uh, you know, and I'm not even Microsoft Teams, a similar, you know, they're, they're basically an integrated chatting. I'm sure CRM, Salesforce probably has something that they yeah. have in the works or something, you know, where you're Slack, your communication um, device. platform, yeah. device. There's a lot and of companies. And all those companies can, can be that. That's There's a lot if of companies. Not, does you, right. Amazon, if they start seeing that Slack's pulling in a billion dollars a year on a messaging right. platform to coordinate, when's the Amazon Slack coming out? No, totally. So Nike, we get Nike up a buck 47. So what was the news on they Nike? They got an upgrade from Goldman. I see. Yeah. So um, they get an upgrade. Let's see what they said, because I had the quote. I had this on the Has front page. disruptive strategy earns them an upgrade. Let's see. Yeah, so um, 
strong brand combined with a disruptive and innovative strategy, these characteristics will position the athletic wear maker for multi-year growth, expansion in margins, and higher returns on invested capital. They have the anal analyst Alexandra Walvis. Walvis wrote in a note, she sees a sharp acceleration in earnings growth and predicts a forward three-year earnings per share CAGR of 19% versus just five in the prior. Yeah, yeah I wonder what the innovative strategy and the disruptive uh, deal is. They don't so, have that. In and just the final price target of 112 versus 95, trading at about okay. 95 right now. My, my take is they're, they're, they're crushing it online, man. We talked about it a little bit, right, oh, yeah. in terms of direct-to-consumer yeah. online. I had mentioned we were talking to our man Kevin Hinks at one point a couple weeks back that I've purchased Nike shoes direct from Nike oh, myself yeah. in the last two months online. I actually purchased one pair. I didn't like exactly how they looked. They look a little different from the pictures. I should have okay. looked things a little closer. Returned it. Bought another pair more closer to what I expected. Um, they're not going to be selling them, selling them on Amazon anymore. So they're kind of cutting them. They want complete control of their brand. And, yeah, the charts just been yeah. gangbusters, man. Yeah. Even back it up even a little bit more, right? Like a five-year. Look at that. I mean, just they really had it from two, right. two solid years. That's October of 17. You go from 50 bucks, and you're flirting it with about a, at 100. A big number, man. Oh. No doubt. We and you know, sneakers, man. You just think about uh, the amount of folks that wear sneakers. Oh, is, yeah. especially in the U.S., man. We love our expensive those those Air Jordans, man. There's a reason reason why Michael Jordan's a billionaire. It has a lot to do with sneakers. Imagine that. Right. They got everyone used to sneakers. Pretty pretty amazing. It is. 877-927-6648. Hey, jumping around a little bit, we're yeah. on sports. Did you see uh, the Mets are probably going to go up for yeah. sale? Yeah, yep. Nothing like another hedge fund billionaire coming into yeah. the... Uh, Steve Cohen. Yeah, so it looks like they're going to put five a... Five-year deal. Yeah, right? so it's interesting how it's going to play out, right? The valuation on the Mets, $2.6 billion, it right. looks like. You can't argue with the fact that sports right now, the amount of money they can sell their media for, because you got to watch sports live. Right. It's only a matter of time until Amazon, Netflix whatever streaming giants out there wants to compete for those packages. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so it looks like the owners are going to be able to kind of maintain their CEO, son, COO role for about right. five years, make the transition easier, and uh, he's going to take about 80% of the, it's a big the Mets. It is a big number, it's man. A big number. It is. Yeah. And that's, you know, I can see that that's a very easy way of selling it when you know you can hang there for five years, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Because you remember that Whitman, he that was the big scandal with him and his partner with Madoff. Yeah. You know, so yeah. they had to give back a lot of money at that point. And they should have, man, yeah. because oh, they, yeah, they might as sure. well have known and been complicit. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that's the reason why you hear about Bobby Bonilla, um, his his contract. I think it's up to like two thousand and forty seven or some okay. insane amount of money okay. because they were trying to push out every single dollar they had. They were signing people to like 30 and 40 year contracts because why would you not when you just took your money, gave it to Madoff, yeah. you said, we'll pay you $40 million over 40 years. You just take that money though, you give it to Madoff, he's guaranteeing 18% a year and then you're paying out these people 40 years later on money that you're basically stealing from the market by giving it to Madoff. But that's why he still gets a million dollars every year. He's been retired for like 12 years or something like that. Really? And it has to do with the fact that the reason they were structuring contracts like that Wow. Is because they were investing with Madoff and getting unrealistic returns. If you're getting unrealistic guaranteed returns, you should be pushing off every single dollar you're ever going to pay anybody into the future. Right. Right. And so right. that's so it's, you know, when you yeah. factor in that type of financial transactions, that's not how the financial world works. The fact that that's what they were doing, they knew they were guaranteed money that the market couldn't produce. So they were structuring their own payables in an unrealistic way that nobody else would ever do knowing that they were guaranteed money that the market couldn't produce for anybody else. Yeah. I and then got they, caught. Well, yeah. they, they didn't get caught criminally, so. Yeah. The, uh, well, it's intriguing there. I guess, you know, uh, that Steve Cohen will, will pick up all that debt, too. You buy, the, you buy the company, the bottom line, you're picking up the contracts, yeah. too. Yeah, and it's not know? a lot of money compared yeah. to the amount of, you know, market cap of, of the, the entire business. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the uh, XAU, the HUI. So bottom line is that, you know, you, you get the dollar coming down the lower end of the consolidation here. Uh, we, we did have the XAU as well as the HUI break topside on Tuesday. Um, 
You know, yesterday the volume was a little bit lighter. 26 million. Tuesday was a beauty. 40 million. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 25. Nasdaq's off four. S&Ps are up one. And we have this... Uh... Yeah, so we got to cover it, man, because yeah. it's just intriguing. From It crosses sports, finance, politics, Ponzi schemes. So after the 1999 season, 20 years ago right now, yeah. remarkable, the, Nets, the Mets owed Bonilla. They released him, okay, but still owed him $5.9 million. Bonilla and his agent offered the Mets a deal. Bonilla would defer the payment for a decade. Mets would pay him an annual paycheck of $1.19 million starting in 2011, ending in 2035, totaling $29.8 million. The owner, Fred Wilpom, accepted the deal mostly because he was heavily invested with the Ponzi scheme of Madoff and the 10% guaranteed returns, it should say, that, that Madoff was promising that he was getting outweighed the 8% that the market was going to have to make him pay for deferring that Mets um, payment to Bonilla for 5.9. So, and as a result, it says it was a big inquiry, you know, that's yeah. it, and it should have been because 
anytime, what do I say to you? Red flag, right? You know, you don't get guaranteed returns above the market guaranteed return. Anytime right. somebody tells you that, folks, wake up. He's a smart businessman. He should have known that something was going on there, as many people seem like they did. Right. And making a deal like this even cements that further, right? But Bonilla, good for him, man, because he's got a million, 1.9 coming to him until 2035, and his last game played was 2001. Not bad. Uh, That's intense. You got 35 years of a million bucks a pop coming to you after you play, and he was an amazing player, so it's a good deal. Bobby Bonilla Day, July, July, July 1st. July 1st. He gets that paycheck July 1st until 2035, man. Pretty amazing. It is. Let's go inside the NDX just before we finish up this hour uh, to see what the strength versus the weakness is. So you get JD.com up 2.5. Uh, that's Dollar Tree nah, up on the heels of Dollar General with their earnings, yeah. maybe. Alexa Pharmaceutical, that's down six. You got uh, Workday off 1.9. Okay. Uh, folks, stay right there. We got uh, Think of Swim coming up next. I'm Ambassador Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Don't forget to check out the front page of TFNN, folks. Morning Mark Report. Tom O'Brien. Wham! <laughs> <laughs>